So we're back at the rescue centre today working with some more severe behaviour problems. We worked with lots of different cases. We had a lot of dogs to go through, so I only really was able to dedicate 20 to 30 minutes to each consultation. And there was a few dogs that were on death row that needed instant behavior modification or they were going to get put down that day so one of the dogs that we had to work with was a brown staffy again found abandoned zero idea where it came from zero information on um, any kind of behavior what environment it was living in what family it was living in and they wanted me to assess it and see if we could work with it very quickly as is often the case with these dogs, it became very apparent that there was no rules, boundaries or expectations with this dog and it was possibly one of the worst jumping up cases that I've ever worked with. So I am not surprised whatsoever um, that this dog was finding it difficult to be rehomed. Anybody that would be interested in coming and looking at this dog would get it out, want to take it for a walk, want to take it into the training field. They'd have this dog jumping up. It was strong, it was powerful, it was athletic. It was hurting with the claws and it was one of those things that, like I say, I had 20 to 30 minutes. This is a dog that will not get rehomed unless this behavior gets addressed. And unfortunately, as is the case with these dogs, if they're not rehomed, even shelters that say they never put a healthy dog down or that they're not kill shelters, they will deem this dog to be an unhealthy dog because of its behavior problems which then justifies them putting it down even if they have the we don't put a healthy dog down kind of mantra so I knew that we had to get on top of this quickly I knew that we needed to correct this behavior very quickly it would take it would be difficult if not impossible to do this with a purely positive based approach so we were definitely going to take a balanced approach of correct redirect reinforce luckily what this dog wanted was fuss and praise so we knew that we had to let it know that jumping up was unacceptable but if it keeps all four on the floor which is a, a process that all dog owners should adopt four on the floor the dog gets nothing positive in its life unless it has four on the floor that little rhyme get that stuck in your head as a dog owner at home it will serve you massively massively with any interactions with your dog but that we want it to have four on the floor when four are on the floor we can praise and reinforce now in terms of the tools that I felt was needed I thought I was comfortable doing this with a slip lead and it was just going to be repetitions 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 the beautiful thing about staffies are they're incredibly eager to please they're very happy to work they're very fun loving and like I say this dog just wanted praise so we didn't need food work we just wanted to let him know what was unacceptable behavior and he could get what he wanted which was fuss and praise through showing desirable behavior so we were able to run him a little bit try and burn off some energy and then we just dove straight into it head first we weren't going to avoid this problem we only had limited time so dive straight in when the jumping behavior was coming up i corrected it with some lead pressure using good body language good leadership waited for the dog to calm down come down and then as soon as that behavior was displayed and i'm talking to start with a millisecond of four on the floor i would come down to the dog and praise and reinforce when you do a process like this you have to be aware that when you then naturally bring away your praise by moving up the dog wants to follow it up so what i'm almost doing is setting him up to fail but with a little bit of finesse and skill I was doing that on purpose because I needed with the limited time that I had to get him to display those negative behaviors which he was doing like mad anyway but that I could then quickly address those behaviors correct them and then modify them to the desired behavior so praise would come on I would come up when that behavior was then following me up lead pressure with a little pop on the slip lead to bring him back down so we correct the behavior with a bit of lead pressure we then redirect into the behavior of four on the floor so we either redirect it physically by pulling him down to four on the floor and then reinforce that or if you've got a dog that knows sit you can redirect it with your verbal obedience work of sit then when he displays that desired behavior which is what i always preach sit stay calm quiet good manners gets you everything good you could ever dream of then we can lavish them with praise reward force you can give them treats if you want to work with food but we correct we redirect to the desired behavior, then we reinforce. So we correct the bad behavior, we redirect to the desired, and then we reinforce the desired. So we're using multiple areas of operant conditioning and always finishing with positive reinforcement, with praise. You could give them access to toys, you can give them access to food, but don't ignore the bad behavior, especially when they're as significant as this. And when you have such a limited time as we had with this dog, it had to be corrected, it had to be corrected quickly, 
as fairly as possible using the minimum amount of physical correction as possible to achieve the outcome. Redirect, reinforce. We drill it, we drill it, we drill it, and in the space of 20 minutes, we were 95% of the way there. Again, this is another case where we have a wonderful, happy-go-lucky, fun-loving staffy that would make a wonderful pet for somebody who knows how to reinforce and enforce rules, boundaries, and expectations. So it was happy to, that we made such significant process, uh, progress in such a small amount of time. It's always wonderful. It's always nice when we get these dramatic transformations and we're able to then hand off that to an owner. And the direction I kind of gave to the staff at the rescue was just try and find an owner that is confident um, and understands the importance of maintaining rules, boundaries, good manners, sit, stay and wait. They're going to follow our boot camp process when they get the dog home for the first month that really drives that home and can get your dog from significant poor behaviours to restructuring the relationship to then fantastic desirable behaviours. Wonderful case to work on. I love working with staffies. It's becoming my motto a little bit. If in doubt, get a staffy. And there is staffies up and down this country. Every shelter is filled with them, but they are an absolute joy to work with. Definitely one of my favourite breeds. Um, just kind of how adaptable they are and how forgiving of the awful things that humans put them through is just a testament to why I love dogs and why I work with these dramatic cases.